All right, Marshall, let's get this guy going. Guys, thanks for attending for another Ultimate Edge webinar series. We have back by popular demand, my sister, Marcia. She did a uh, presentation the, the, with us some time back. It's probably been a couple months, Marcia, when you told us your story about getting into real estate and getting into loans and everything. Compelling, I got lots of feedback on that. And we'll put a link in this particular video on our YouTube channel. If you guys want to see it, just click on it there. So thanks for joining us again, Marcia. Appreciate it. Well, you're welcome, John. My pleasure. I'm excited to be here and, and to, you know, hopefully shed a little bit of light and hope with this new NAR settlement. <laughs> and hope, that's right. Okay, so for those of you in on top of the NAR settlement thing, Sometime back this year, the Justice Department sued the National Association of Realtors and won a lawsuit for 400 and some million dollars of penalties that, as we said on our invitation, changed the landscape of real estate for basically ever. Basically, what's going on, Justice Department said that there was not transparency in fees for the buyer's agent and the selling agent and who paid them, and it was confusing for buyers and sellers. It's not going to be confusing anymore, I assure you because the buyer is going to have a fee agreement with their agent and it's going to say how much they're going to get paid. But the puzzling thing here still, or maybe confusing or maybe mysterious <laughs> is that we don't know if the seller is going to pay the fee for the buyer's agent. They can choose to do so, but they don't have to, and they don't have to say one way or the other. So it puts the buyer um, in kind of a conundrum there, but there are solutions here and Marsha is going to tell us all about them. So, Marsha, I'm yes, a real John. estate buyer. My agent's name, by the way, is Mickey. She's just a great guy. My lender's name is Minnie, and I love her to death. She's awesome. Mickey and Minnie, they're a pair, as you might imagine. But we're dealing with my seller, and his name is Slim. Um, not Slim Pickens. What did I call him, Marsha? Earlier, I think it's Slim Cheapo. Oh, that's right. Mr. Cheapo. I forgot about that. Yeah, Mr. Cheapo. Which is kind of indicative of what we're faced here. Slim Cheapo. So Slim is not willing to pay for the buyer's agent fee in this particular situation. And that kind of puts me in a bit of a problem here because I only have so much money. And I'm kind of wondering, are there any solutions to my dilemma? Well, that is a great question, John. So um, thank you for asking that. And I'm going to set this up because I did talk to Minnie. And Minnie said that you applied for a home loan and you were pre-approved. I think she said up to a million. Uh, and you had uh, you were planning on putting 10% down and you had uh, some funds to cover the closing costs and you're super excited to get out there and start shopping and now you're in this situation where you might need a little more money is that accurate john yeah so my excitement is kind of giving way here to trepidation maybe i'm a little uncertain on what i can do because i only have so much money and Minnie knows that so that's why she gave you a call because I told her you might have some options. So what can we do, Marcia? Go ahead and show us. All right. So let me pull up my screen here. All right. So John, um, so you're in this, you've got this deal going with Mr. Cheapo and you're, I guess that you're, uh, have made an offer of $900,000 and um, you, Mr. Cheapo is suggesting that he's not going to pay your wonderful buyer's agent's commission. And my understanding from Mickey is that his commission is two and a half percent. Yes. So you're, you're correct. in. I'm sorry. Yeah. That is all correct. Yes. Okay. So you're in. So you're making an offer, and that will leave the uh, twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars is the dollar amount that you're going to need to come up with to pay your awesome agent Mickey. Okay. So let's take a look at, at some thoughts that I have for you, John, because I know how bad you want this property. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You just she gotta says, have not this gonna one. be happy if we do not get this property. Okay. okay. Well, we have we need a happy wife. So that's right. Yeah. You're gonna see there on the left of your screen four columns. Now uh, I'm gonna go through these. I'm gonna go slow. And if you guys 
lose me or you're not understanding or something like that, you know, please let me know. Um, because this can be kind of overwhelming and it's a lot of numbers. Okay. Now I like yeah, to guys, call I wanna, this. Let me miss mention for our webinar audience, Marcia, that the chat box is open and I'll be watching that. And if you have questions as we go along, certainly put them in there and I can ask Marcia as we go. Thanks, Marcia. All right. Okay. Now, John, I call this the pre-offer huddle. Uh, you already made your offer. So this is the, the what if, uh, I, I also call this the what if scenario. What if that listing, that seller's agent is not going to pay the commission? And so here is option number one. It, was, it would be if the seller agreed to pay, this would be what the numbers look like, John. You're buying this house at 900,000. You're putting 10% down. So you have a loan amount. Let me just highlight these like this of 810. You've got good credit, John. Uh, in today's market, you're getting a rate of six and a half. And down here shows the total payment, 5731. That includes property taxes, insurance. I'm gonna show that on another screen here shortly so you see all the breakdown. Um, and the cash to close is 101,257. So that's the perfect scenario. Mr. Chipo uh, finally said, yes, I'll pay your Mickey's commission and here you're all set. But that's not really what's going on here because Mr. Chipo said, I'm not gonna pay the commission. Yeah. But John, there's a, here I got like three different options for you. Let's look at option number two here. Now you could you could add that twenty two thousand five hundred to the to the purchase price and ask the okay. seller to then pay the twenty two thousand five hundred to Mickey's for Mickey's commission. You could do that. Now it does need to appraise, so that's always a consideration. And um, if it doesn't appraise, you know we could possibly employ what we call an appraisal gap strategy. But that's outside the scope of this conversation right now, John. So let's assume it's going to appraise, okay? Okay. So you're Very still good. you're putting ten percent down. Now your loan amount is eight thirty, two fifty, same rate, and down here would be the payment based on the uh, the higher price, okay? Fifty eight sixty one. So that's about. 70 and 60, dollars more. How do you feel about that? That's not bad. I mean, with the five thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, I mean, we can do that. Yeah, that, okay. that's dual. Okay, so that's one option for you, John. And then this right here would be your cash to close. That's and, not bad. I'm not real thrilled was, about that's... paying more for the house, though, Marcia. You got some other yeah. option where I don't have to do that. Well, let's go here over here to option number three. This is an option where you're not paying more for the house, John. So you're gonna uh, you're gonna pay nine hundred thousand for the house, but in this scenario, instead of putting ten percent down, you're gonna take that twenty two thousand five hundred off of the ninety thousand, and you're gonna put sixty seven thousand five hundred down. So it's not quite 10%, John, it's like 7%. So you're going to finance 832500 And you're going to save that 22500 because you're going to have to be paying your agent with that, okay? Uh, so here's what these numbers would look like. Same rate, John. Uh, down here is your total payment, 5903 so it is more than this one, a little bit more than this one, but it does, and it's because of the mortgage insurance and the higher loan amount. But it oh, okay. does allow you to save your the twenty two thousand five hundred. So here's your cash to close when you go to escrow, and but remember you'll also be bringing the twenty two thousand five hundred for your okay. agent. So it's going to end yeah. up being the hundred and one thousand. Got How it. do you feel right. about that, John? Well, you know, it's not bad. The payment's a little higher, I see, and I'm not real thrilled about that. But 
I, I can get rid of the mortgage insurance sometime, right, Marcia? Is that possible? Yeah, we're going to talk about that here in a minute, John. Okay. So, uh, yes, the answer to your question is yes. Now, this is a monthly mortgage insurance option right here where you're paying it monthly. You know, okay. you can also, let me get rid of this and this. Go over here. You can finance a lump sum of mortgage insurance if you want, John. What that means is instead of paying monthly, you it's kind of like a VA, the funding fee. You can actually take a lump sum, and in this case, it's $5,700. Um, you can actually add that to your loan amount right there, and then you have no monthly mortgage insurance, okay? So okay. That, so your loan amount would be higher here, John, because you just finance the, the lump sum of mortgage insurance. But you look at your payment down here. It's a little bit lower. It's about $100. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, almost $100 lower. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, again, you would be bringing in the $78,000 plus the $22,500 to escrow for, your, for the fee for your buyer's agent. Okay? For me. Okay. Now uh, let's let's look at the breakdown here just so that we can follow this through a little bit better. All right, so 10% down. So in these scenarios, I'm using $350 a month for property taxes was an assumption. And I assumed $160 a month for insurance your hurricane, your homeowners, whatever insurance that you need. Now you'll okay. see you're putting 10% down on all of these. So even on the first scenario, you're gonna have mortgage insurance. There's the okay. monthly mortgage insurance. So that's how we came up with this 5731 uh, based on the seller paying the commission, okay? But in this case, as we know, seller's not gonna pay. So in this one, we were doing 10% down, but including the 22,500 in the price, which he didn't really like. And I kind of get that, John. Uh, but same taxes, same insurance, and the mortgage insurance is slightly higher than the other one, just because of the loan amount. Okay? Good. Are you following me? How about, yeah. John, if you can check with the, the participants to see if this is all making sense and if they're following and if anybody has any questions thus far. I have the chat box open, Marcia, I'm watching, and I don't see anybody who puts any questions in just yet. Okay. Feel free to drop questions and comments. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me put a thumbs up for you, though, Marcia. Somebody's liking it. Oh, good. <laughs> all right. And then this one right here, the option three was, um, again, the monthly mortgage insurance. So this right here, let me just get rid of this up here. Let me get rid of this, this, this. Here's your monthly mortgage insurance right here, 131.81, okay? Okay. Uh, little bit higher than over here because you're not putting quite 10% down. You're putting uh seven and a half percent down and then the so that's the mortgage insurance is a little higher and then this last column as we discussed you're going to pay you're going to finance a lump sum of mortgage insurance on top of your loan amount and therefore you don't have any monthly because it's financed in okay and here's the difference you'll see when you finance it, the difference in the payment on those two is 30 you know, $30, basically. Okay. And so without the monthly, you're saving a hundred bucks. So uh, thoughts on that, John, questions? Do where, where, you what know, are you feeling here? Well, here's what I'm feeling, Marcia. I'm not certain which one is the best option given all that I see here. Can you kind of clarify that for me and kind of drill on which one you would suggest? I sure can, John. Thanks for asking. You bet. Okay, so it's, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go all the way out of here, and um, I'm gonna go over here and see if I can show this to you guys. All right. So you see this graph right here: savings over 24 months, two-year look, basically. 
Yes. I, I'm going to explain this. So, okay. John, you know, based on uh, the rate environment and what the projections are from the Fed, from the economists and all that, I feel like it's very likely that you will probably run into a refinance opportunity, John. And it could be 12 months from now, 18 months from now, nine months from now, who knows, okay? So my thoughts are, um, I wouldn't go with this option four where you're financing the mortgage insurance because sure. I think that you're going to refinance before then, and therefore you would have just kind of thrown away fifty seven hundred dollars because okay. it's financed into your loan amount. So therefore, when you go to refinance, your your the loan amount is going to be that much higher. I okay. also wouldn't go if I didn't have to. I would not go with adding it to the price because when you go to refinance, your loan amount is $22,500 more than it really needed to be had you chose another option. So if it were me, John, and you'll see this graph right here. So this is a two-year look. And we, you know, what we do, we use this presentation for almost every buyer because we like to show a total cost over time. And I can also call that a total savings over time. And we can pick any time frame here. So I chose two years. Like which, this is telling you, John, that had you taken the first option, which is not an option because Mr. Cheapo said he's not gonna pay. But had, yeah. you, had he paid, then your overall savings would have been $6,928 from worst case scenario, okay? Over a two year period. Okay. This one right here, option three. Now, this is deceiving. Uh, it does say that your savings over a two-year period is $4,209. But that's in the payments and the interest that you're paying. And it doesn't take into account that $22,500 increase in your loan oh, amount. Okay. So All right. gotcha. that's a little deceiving. Um, this one right here. Compared to this one, the, the financed mortgage insurance and the monthly, this is telling you that in two years, your savings over and above the financed mortgage insurance option would be $3,241, John. If this was me, that would be the route I would go. Because I don't okay. really want to so, add it to the loan amount. And I feel like, you know, the difference in the payment in the next 18 months is not that much. And then I'll be set for a refinance. Okay, so if I understand this, Stacy's asking a question, and I think that I understand it, Marcia, that that little graph shows the comparison of savings to the most expensive option, which is the right-hand option. That's why it's zero dollars. So the the upfront mortgage insurance premium costs most if I refinance within 24 months because I paid a large sum for the mortgage insurance up front and didn't have time to recoup that with the, say, that $100 savings, right? That's exactly so, right, John. Now, and if I, this was, you know, if we were looking at a five year, like a 60 month uh, scenario or seven years, then th this would, this one would probably win out because then you have recouped it over that period of time. Got it. Uh, yeah. But Again, I, you know, I, I think, you know, we all hope, I guess, I don't know if that's a strategy, but based on what, what it looks like uh, the Fed is doing and based on what, you know, inflation, the inflation numbers came out the other day, looks like they're sort of getting it under control and the bond market's really liking that. So we do see on the horizon better rate. Okay, I got it. So all of those other options, one, two, and three, are compared with the most expensive option, which is number four. And number three, you're saying is a good option because it saves me $3,241 over two years compared to the fourth option. I get That's it. exactly right, John. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, that's cool. I really like the fact that you have this total cost thing, Marcia. That means that if I think I'm going to hold a loan for five years, can you change that? And you can show me which one would be better for five years or four, four and a half years or whatever I think. Is that possible? I can not change now, that. But... <laughs> Are you asking me to do that now? I'm not asking you right now, but. 
Okay. No, no. All right. Yeah. Because I, I don't want to know that fumble was... around trying to go back into the presentation. But yes, I can send that to you, John. I'll be happy to do All that. Right. Got it. Okay. I like it. So okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. What so, questions all right, do you so have? I see that the best option here is um, based on the time you're going to have the loan. And if I'm going to have it for 24 months, it, it comes out that the monthly mortgage insurance option is the best. Marcia, if, if, uh, are there other options besides this one that you want to just cover it all, first of all? Is there sure. anything else that works here? Yeah. Well, you know, I, have, I put a lot of thoughts into this, um, a lot of thought, I should say. I did want to, you know, I've talked to a ton of of real estate partners. Uh, I've listened to a thousand podcasts. Everybody's got their perspectives, <laughs> et cetera. Um, but I, you know, I put myself in the shoes of a real estate agent and that conversation, that tough conversation. To me, it's kind of a tough conversation. Uh, maybe not to the experts out there who are having it. Um, it, but I also try to put myself in the shoes of a buyer and hearing in the conversation. And I, I think it's, you know, it's a little bit rocky, a little bit rough waters here from the get go. And I know a lot of the buyers that are going to be maybe, I don't want to say left out in the cold, but they don't have maybe this option or some of those zero down bar buyers. Oh, okay, you know, you yeah. got your, you got your VA, you got your, uh, USDA, you have your low down, you know, FHA is a three and a half percent down. And uh, so you, so if you were going to use any one of these strategies, uh, you would have to have, if you're going to ask the seller to pay, you would have to put 6% down, three and a half plus two and a half, basically. Um, but I really, I was talking to an agent this morning and she asked us, kind of a smart question and it started me thinking and um thank you for that um so in this scenario john it's a va buyer zero down payment and we were and the seller was willing to pay and i think that this might be more cut this might end up being kind of more normal than not they're willing to pay but they weren't going to pay the full two and a half percent so they were okay. in this case, they were going to pay two, but maybe they're only going to pay one and a half. And so there's, there's a shortfall there, right? And then in the particular case uh, with this borrower, we looked at, I looked at the pricing and the light bulb went on. I said, you know, you're only short $3,000. Now, based on the numbers that we have gone over, we're going to give a lender credit of $6,000 that the buyer can use towards his closing costs. So that's going to free up $6,000 for the buyer. Uh -huh. And that, okay. therefore, he can set aside that $3,000. Now, is that going to work for everybody? No, but, there, but it can be an option. Lenders can give lender credits for closing costs based on the scenario and the pricing and the rate it's all in the rate and maybe if you're a buyer and you need a large credit and and the lender can give it to you at a higher rate but you're thinking you know what this is for 18 months because i'm going to be refinancing maybe that can work for those zero down buyers that don't really have a lot of money they've okay. got enough set aside to try to cover closing costs and that's it so, um, and then I'm also, we're also, you know, there's some down payment assistant programs out there for those low down buyers that don't have funds. So I am lo looking at that as well, John, and checking the guidelines to make sure that maybe we could use the down payment funds or the down payment, and that would free up some of the buyer's funds for the commission, if it comes to that. And again, okay. hopefully the sellers are going to you know, be willing to pay. But I do, as I mentioned, I think it could come down to where they're going to pay, but maybe not the full amount. Okay, so everybody chips in. The lender chips in maybe, and the buyer may chip in a little bit, and the seller may chip a little bit, and we come up with an amount to pay the buyer's agent. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. This is a fluid, well, Marcia, fluid you... situation, John. So. <laughs> 
you've given me hope here that I can potentially put this little deal together with Mr. Slim Cheapo and maybe buy the cell house. There's options available. So that's good to know. Yes. Yeah, there is, John. I appreciate and it. We can fine tune or we can create this presentation for any number of scenarios. I did one at 20% down, you know, and the numbers, you know, maybe instead of putting the 20, you just put 17% down, 17 and a half, that kind of thing. And uh, or 50, maybe you've got 15, you know, there's all kinds of different scenarios, John, and we can create these very quickly. And as I mentioned, we can set up that pre-offer huddle with the real estate agent and the client. So you're going into it fully informed and not so fearful because you understand that you do have other options. Wow, Marcia, if there's any um, theme that I got out of this particular presentation is that there are options, more than what's on the screen, and those are pretty cool options. And if everybody shares, the lender and all of that, that was that was an insightful um, suggestion there that we everybody can put some together and make it work. And so it's case by case, and they should do that little pre-huddle that you're talking about right up front before they start searching for homes. So just in case they find themselves in this situation, they know that there's a strategy to deal with it. You got it, John. I, I highly, highly encourage agents and buyers to, to do that so that they can go in confident, basically. Starla is also mentioning that the buyer's agent could also discount their commission if they needed to to make the deal happen. So again, okay. it's kind of everybody working together to, to put a buyer into a house, which is kind of what we do, of course, as we know. Great information, Marsha. Are there any other thoughts before we kind of wrap this up that you want to share with our, we have a webinar audience and also our YouTube audience to think of? Well, I, you know, I want to, I don't have a thought, but I have a question for my real estate partners or any realtor out there, because it's kind of a moving target. And I'm just really wondering, it's kind of a poll question, like how, like what, percent of the time this is my my poll question because i was listening to a, a podcast of a real estate agent in iowa that they already implemented the nar uh, uh requirement for about a month ago and the question was like how many sellers do you think are going to be willing to pay the buyer's commission and That's it was quite interesting yeah, I'd love to know that if you guys want to put your thoughts in the chat. I would just be really interested in knowing that. Um, the I, And I know every region is different. I know every county is different. The markets are different. But according to that Iowa realtor, I found this a little bit, I don't and maybe unnerving. But he said that he didn't, he said that 50% of the sellers were not uh, going to show their hand. And they, when the agents call to find out what kind of uh, concession they might get, the response was, make an offer and we'll let you know. It's kind of like mm -hmm. making blind offers. Yeah, there's the mysterious part of all this, absolutely. So, so I just, I, my main theme is that as a lending professional, it's incumbent on us, John, to help our partners navigate these waters. And that's what this is all about. And so questions or needs or, or strat you guys need a strategy session, whatever, please feel free to reach out to either John or myself. Absolutely. Let me check the chat box here one more time. <clears throat> Nothing new there, guys. I've got another minute or so if I wrap this up, so feel free to type in a question. Um, good summary, Marcia, good information. Um, I, I think that Marsh and I both agree, guys, that there's been a significant change, as we all know in the industry, but real estate agents are just like loan officers, mortgage people. We're entrepreneurial in nature. We're looking for solutions, and we're going to find solutions for this particular problem if it is a problem for your buyers. If the seller's unwilling to pay, then we'll look at some options that Marsh has presented here and some that we just talked about. So it's not the end of the world, that's for sure. Um, 
Gary says, so there are no upfront negotiations. And I think a real estate agent could probably answer that. I suspect there are, Gary. You know, you're going to have conversations with the selling agent and say, well, this is what we can do. And that's things are going to get revealed and sellers could potentially change their mind and potentially pay for it. I don't really know. I'd have to ask our real estate buddies here. Once the contract is established with the seller, if they what um, um, flexibility they have in changing what they said they want to do. It's a good question. Anything you know anything about that, Marsha? You know, the whole uh, theme behind the lawsuit is negotiation, I guess, if I had to think of one word. So I don't know after a contract is, is signed and everybody's moving forward if you can still come back and negotiate, but I'm sure there's some smart agents on here that know that answer. Well, Linda and John are both talking. So John said, so far what we have seen is sellers are either status quo and offering compensation or just what you stated. They want to see the offer and negotiate. So John, does that mean that a seller might state to their agent, no, I'm not going to pay the buyer's commission and then see an offer and say, oh, I changed my mind. I'm going to go ahead and pay the commission. Can they do that? Can you give us a quick little yes or no on that, guys? That would be helpful. All right, so once again, there are options, guys. If you have any questions, reach out to Marsha or myself. If you're a YouTube channel, you can comment, uh, subscribe, as we always suggest you do, and you'll have more of these videos coming your way, more of these um, presentations coming your way. I see some typing going on, so I'm going to wait just one more minute, Marsha, before we call it good in the presentation. So thanks for your time. I'm putting that together. I like that presentation a lot. It um, certainly lays out the numbers really, really clearly. And I know from experience here with you that it shows a lot more than this. You can do a reinvestment strategy for people when they're talking to their financial planner and you can take the savings and you can reinvest them back into the loan that you had. You just refinanced and pay it off quicker and it'll show you all of that, won't it? All of the above. All right. It's a great presentation. All right. Thank okay, John's you. answering my question. They they are saying they'll offer compensation, but the amount will be determined by the review of the offer. Great info, Marsha. Mahalo from John. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Thanks, Marsha, for being our presenter today. We appreciate the information. It was great. Awesome. All right, go out there and buy that house. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Uh, take care. Aloha.